Hi friends, I welcome you all here at TNV Academy. This clause 8.1 of ISO 22000-2018 states that the organization is required to plan, implement, control, maintain and update the processes needed to meet requirements for the realization of safe products and to implement the actions determined in subclause 6.1 of the standard by establishing criteria for the processes, implementing control of the processes in accordance with the criteria and keeping documented information to the extent necessary to have the confidence to demonstrate that the processes have been carried out as planned. Subclause specifies that the organization must control planned changes and review the consequences of unintended changes taking action to mitigate any adverse effects as necessary. Lastly, the clause 8.1 of ISO 22000 states that the organization must ensure that outsourced processes are controlled. Let us understand this subclause 8.1. If you are setting up a food safety management system in the direction that the standard has been written, you will have arrived at clause 8 of the standard with risks opportunities and objectives that need to be considered when establishing the food safety management system. Without this understanding in hand, you could develop a management system that does not address these risks and opportunities or supports the setting objectives. The standard requires us to establish criteria for the processes or, in other words, what performance processes are desirable to determine the effectiveness of processes in the FSMS. These might include performance against targets, numbers of occurrences and problems, lost and gained services, volumes against supply and demand, security breaches, customer satisfaction and complaints, plus much more. These measures must be appropriate to each individual business. Don't measure and monitor things that do not bring service improvement or customer satisfaction. Once you understand the measurement criteria, you can initiate to build the food safety management system to meet these requirements, implementing control of the processes in accordance with the criteria, performance criteria communicated through SLAs, OLAs and KPIs. A good management system doesn't end there as it will have determined what documented information needs to be kept to exhibit achievement of measures and compliance to the standard. The control of scheduled changes and the evaluation of the consequences of unintended changes leave many with a challenge. We all understand planned changes, especially if we have an effective change management process in place which will naturally control planned changes. However, the consequences of unintended change are a little unclear, probably because it covers a broad subject. So let's cover this further. Unintended change might result from process creep where a process has been developed and moved away from its agreed path without consultation with other departments that might be affected. And the consequence is the unintended change brought upon other processes which rely on the initial process that has been changed. Other areas where the consequences of unintended change may be found are related to impacts of incidents, problems and non-conformities where the errors have impacts that are either unexpected or unintended and need further consideration. Another example in relation to this standard is service creep where items of equipment owned by a customer and outside the contracted service agreement are accepted up in the service contract because of poor asset management and configuration management. And you effectively end up servicing equipment for free. If these types of things occur, it is important that the actions are investigated through to root cause level to prevent their repetition. Coming now to Clause 8.2, Prerequisite Programs, PRPs. The subclause 8.2.1 specifies that the organization is required to establish, implement, 
maintain and update PRPs to facilitate the prevention and or reduction of contaminants including food safety hazards in the products, product processing and work environment. The clause 8.2.2 states that the PRPs must be appropriate to the organization and its context with regards to food safety and appropriate to the size and type of the operation and the nature of the products being manufactured and or handled. As per this subclause, the PRPs must be implemented across the entire production system, either as programs applicable in general or as programs applicable to a particular product or process. According to subclause 8.2.2, PRPs must be approved by the food safety team to meet the requirements of the standard. Coming now to subclause 8.2.3. This subclause 8.2.3 states that when selecting or establishing PRPs, the organization is required to ensure that applicable statutory, regulatory, and mutually agreed customer requirements are identified. According to this subclause, the organization should consider the applicable part of the ISO TS 22002 series and applicable standards, codes of practice and guidelines. Let us talk about clause 8.2.4. The subclause 8.2.4 states that when establishing PRPs, the organization is required to consider construction, layout of buildings and associated utilities, layout of the premises including zoning, workspace and employee facilities, supplies of air, water, energy and other utilities, pest control, waste and sewage disposal and supporting services, the suitability of equipment and its accessibility for cleaning and maintenance, supplier approval and assurance processes, Example, raw materials, ingredients, chemicals, and packaging. Reception of incoming materials, storage, dispatch, transportation, and handling of products. Measures for the prevention of cross-contamination. Cleaning and disinfecting. Personal hygiene. Product information or consumer awareness. And others as appropriate. The subclause 8.2.4 also states that documented information must specify the selection, establishment, applicable monitoring, and verification of the PRPs. Coming now to the clause 8.3 of ISO 22000-2018, that is, traceability system. According to this clause 8.3 of ISO 22000-2018, the traceability system must be able to uniquely identify incoming material from the suppliers and the first stage of the distribution route of the end product. Clause 8.3 states that when establishing and implementing the traceability system, the organization is required to consider parameters like relation of lots of received materials, ingredients and intermediate products to the end products, reworking of materials or products, and the distribution of the end product. This clause also states that the organization is required to ensure that applicable statutory, regulatory, and customer requirements are identified. As per clause 8.3, traceability system, the organization is required to retain documented information as evidence of the traceability system for a defined period to include, as a minimum, the shelf life of the product. The organization is also required to verify and test the effectiveness of the traceability system. Finally, the clause 8.3 provides guidance and states under a note that where appropriate, the verification of the system is expected to include the reconciliation of quantities of end products with the quantity of ingredients as evidence of effectiveness. Coming now to the clause 8.4, emergency preparedness and response. 
Let's begin with the sub clause 8.4.1 general. The sub clause 8.4.1 general of ISO 22000-2018 states that the top management is required to ensure procedures are in place to respond to potential emergency situations or incidents that can have an impact on food safety, which are relevant to the role of the organization in the food chain. Subclause 8.4.1 says that an organization is required to establish and maintain the documented information to manage emergency situations and incidents. Coming now to Clause 8.4.2. Handling of emergencies and incidents. As per this sub clause 8.4.2, the organization is required to respond to actual emergency situations and incidents by ensuring that the applicable statutory and regulatory requirements are identified. Organization is also required to respond to actual emergency situations and incidents by communicating internally and externally with suppliers customers, appropriate authorities and media, etc. This clause says that organization must take actions to reduce the consequences of the emergency situations appropriate to the magnitude of the emergency or incident and the potential food safety impact. As per this subclause 8.4.2 of ISO 22000, organization is required to test procedures periodically where practical. Organization must review and update the documented information after the occurrence of any incident, emergency situation or tests wherever necessary. Lastly, the subclause states under a note that examples of emergency situations that can